All right, we're about to start our demonstration here on uh, crusty French bread and a liver pate. Uh, so the chicken's from Country Ribbon here in the province, obviously, and bread, perfect accompaniment to know to do any time. So the bread recipe we're going to do today, we're kind of doing two demos in one, uh, but the bread recipe we're going to do today is one that is what I think is the best of both worlds. You get that uh, flavorful, crusty French bread style, but it's not so hard that it, tears at the roof of your mouth when you eat it. I'm sure you, you've had some of those breads. This is a perfect blend. So you can see that it's, right? But at the same time, it's soft and pliable on the inside, okay? I'm going to talk to you guys about bread and some of the things that you can do uh, to create that result, okay? Thank you. And then, of course, uh, something like liver pate is obviously a beautiful way to enjoy bread. Um, just a little spread, maybe a little pickle. And that's kind of what we're going to sample to you today. So we, we showed you pickling this morning. We're going to use some of those. We're going to show you the pate. We're going to show you the bread. We're going to put it all together and give it to you as a sample. Uh, these are excellent bread for sandwiches, excellent bread for slicing and making toast. Um, it's just a very, very versatile bread. So the first thing I'm going to do is get started on the bread, okay? So whenever you're doing my line up here, just give me a holler if uh, I'm not doing something correct. Um, warm water. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about our ingredients. So obviously yeast, right, crucial. We got gluten flour. Gluten flour is basically the gluten taken from flour, all right? And what that's going to do is, you don't use very much of it, but what it's going to do is that's going to give you that tough exterior. All right, that crunchy exterior. Um, then we've got uh, sugar, salt. We've got just a little bit of uh, vegetable, uh, like lard or, or vegetable uh, fat. And then that's the secret is the vitamin C tablet. So just a typical vitamin C tablet that you get for $4 for 150 or whatever, wherever. You take one tablet, you crush it. All right, just underneath a you know, bowl like that and just turn it into a rough powder. And what that vitamin C tablet is going to do is that's going to condition the bread. All right, and it's going to make it really, really soft and tender on the inside. All right, so that's, one of the, that's, a, that's a quick hack there. And then now I want to talk about how to bring all this stuff together and kind of the idea of, of making bread. One more. So first I want to talk about yeast. All right. Any kind of leavened bread, it's always good to get your yeast going, okay? Now, a lot of times you may read recipes that say just throw the yeast in dry, put it in your flour, and it will work, okay? But it's, it's not the best way to go about it. The best way to go about it is dissolve it in the water. Dissolve it, whisk it, make sure it's completely uh, incorporated into your water. So... Um, there's a couple of ways to go about it. Sometimes what I like to do is, in order to control the temperature, the hotter the water, the more you're going to drive the yeast. If it's too hot, you're going to inhibit it from growth. If it's too cold, uh, it'll be okay. Uh, cold is fine for yeast. So there's many different approaches, but we want to make this not a long process. We want to kind of get this bread done in an hour and a half. So we're going to drive it with warm water. So I recommend around 100, 110 degrees. Um, and all we're going to do is make sure we got the right measurement, which in this case, thank you, sir. So we want one and a quarter cup. So I'm going to reserve a quarter cup. I'm going to reserve that little bit, and that's what I'm going to use to dissolve my yeast, okay? So I'm really going to get that worked around and let that warm water. And sometimes, you know, you let it go foamy, and that's a good thing. All right, whisk the foam. And then from there, we're going to let that sit for a minute or so. And while we're waiting for that to sit, we're going to take our gluten flour and put that in, take our vitamin C tablet, take our vegetable fat, and sugar, and always reserve the salt. 
Never put your salt in with your yeast, okay? Always mix that together and then salt at the very end. Salt's an inhibitor, so it'll, it'll delay the yeast. It'll negatively impact the yeast, okay? So always, always, under all circumstances using yeast, add your salt last. So we've got our water. We'll just loosely mix these dry ingredients together. Kind of break that uh, fat up. Just kind of spread it around. And now we've got our dry ingredients ready to go, okay? Simple as that. Now I like to take what I've mixed up here in the yeast, put that in first, and if I got any residual yeast here, this is why I separate the water. You know, you, you, you want to get all that, so I'll end up cleaning the bowl with the rest of the water. So that way the bowl that I put the yeast in is now clean, okay? And now all I'm going to do is bring that together. And be careful when you're, whenever you're mixing uh, flour, sometimes you may look at it and you may think to yourself, it needs more water. It's too dry. Well, whenever you're bringing these ingredients together initially, you have to give the flour time to absorb the water. All right? And all flour, depending on what you're doing, has a different absorption rate. So sometimes you may hear things like a Tipo double zero flour which is basically just a finer grain soft wheat flour, that'll, that'll absorb quicker. Uh, the flour that we have takes a little bit more time. So even now, you look at this and you think it's a little dry. So what we want to do is just give it a minute, all right? Not too long, but there's plenty of moisture in there. So as I knead this and work it, that moisture is going to dry out. And it's going to give us the ability to kind of be able to take in the rest of those ingredients. Okay, so just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to move forward. Normally, I would let this sit for about five minutes, okay, and then finish it out. All right? But in case, I'm just going to move ahead because we're here on stage. So I'm going to try to get some of that. And I'll start adding this back in just as the process moves on. So now that the ingredients are together, I can add my salt, okay? That, now we're good to go. So I'm just going to dump my salt in like that and spread that around. And now when it comes to kneading, it's real simple. Just from the front to the back and out, quarter turn. Front, back, quarter turn, okay? Everybody can kind of see what I'm kind of doing there. Now, even as I'm doing this, I can feel it. Dough is, you know, the nanas in, in, in Italy are always about the feel of bread, right? Feel is really important. So this is a bit of a tough bread off the beginning, but I can already see that the moisture is starting to come out. And I'm feeling it on my hands. And you want the bread to be tacky, but not sticky, right? There's a, a definitely a difference between those two characteristics. Sticky is hard to work with. Tacky is, is optimal, all right, and ideal. So again, I'm just going to kind of continue to knead that. Get that into a tight ball. Now it's a little tougher than normal, but again, I kind of skip that initial stage. And then all we're going to do is put that into a bowl, cover it, and let it double in size. So it's always nice to have it at room temperature or maybe even sit in the sun like, uh, you know, in your window. And it'll usually take around 45 minutes to an hour, all right? And that'll double in size and fill up. I usually use a tea or a dishcloth, or you can wrap it tightly in saran wrap. You know, lots of options, but keep it covered. Another good idea is a little bit of oil, all right, at this stage. So just a little bit and kind of go all around the ball. And there you go, you're ready to go. So put that away, and the magic of demonstrations, we've got one ready to go. Okay. So now, that one's definitely softened. It's nice, it's got lots of, uh, you can almost, I don't know if you can see the webbing in there, but you know, you can see that it's nice. Right, that's exactly what you want. So this, is, this recipe is going to yield uh, six bread rolls. 
like this. So it's a nice little recipe to do. Uh, so you can either scale it and weigh it, 125, 130 grams each, or you can just kind of, you know, eyeball it, make it into a nice even log, and then just simply you know, six even pieces, okay? And then what we're going to do is just put them in the balls, okay? Like that. And then we're going to let that sit for about another 10 minutes, okay? And every time you're working dough, you're working the gluten. The dough is getting tougher and tougher, so then you need on the other side, let it relax. Okay? So every time we roll or play with, we let it relax. And the magic of demonstrations, we've got six already relaxed. So you can almost see the difference in size. They've risen a little bit in that time. They've relaxed. They're much looser. But again, it's, it's, it's tacky, but it's not sticky. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to shape our rolls, all right, and prep for the oven. So in order to do that, all we're going to do is just like making a pizza, all right? We're just going to push it out. So we start in the middle, and we push out, and we push out. So always from the middle and out, from the middle and out, okay? And this is where practice makes it easier. You know, you do it quicker, but at the same time, there's something really beautiful about making bread. So uh, once you're into it, you know, time is more, you're doing this more to escape it, I find, than you are to kind of put pressure on yourself to have it done in a certain amount. So all we're doing is putting it into a disc like that, nice and simple, yeah? And now, in order to shape it into a roll and to get a right bake and to get it to become kind of, you know, a pretty presentation, kind of that French style, we're going to take it and roll it in from the bottom and the top to the middle, Okay. So I'm just going to start, and this is where that tackiness is really desired, okay? So if it's sticky, you'll be hard to work with, and if it's not tacky at all, it won't come together, all right? So you, you, you want that kind of tackiness but not stickiness. So when I just, can you guys see that up there? I'll do a couple. So I'm just going to bring that together like that, and then I'm going to pinch it real good, okay? And I'm going to form what's going to be a nice, beautiful kind of, All right, just like that. So I'll do a couple more real quick. Again, the more you do, the, the quicker you get at it. And then later on, you can kind of double fist it. And like I say, where this recipe is done for just six loaves, it's nice and quick to do for sandwiches or for hors d'oeuvres when friends come over. Uh, and one thing that we're doing in all these demonstrations is we've done some pickling and marinating vegetables, We've done bread, we've done a chicken liver pate, we're going to do a bologna, a homemade bologna tomorrow. All those things are going to get put together as a charcuterie plate in our very last demo to show how you can bring all these little bits of the cranberry relish we did and, and bring it all together to kind of serve friends and family at once, you know, instead of uh, having to buy it all in stores. So again, just to show that technique one more time, you just from the top to the middle, from the bottom to the middle, and then pinch. And make sure you get a good seal on it. You don't want it to break apart, and it definitely on the ends. And then, again, you see that tackiness? Tacky but not sticky, okay? That's what you're looking for. Tacky but not sticky. So same thing. We'll roll from the top into the bottom, and away we go. So now, now that that's done, we're looking at about, I'll say, another 40 minutes of proofing to get it to this size where it's ready in the oven. Okay, so all you do is just wrap this with a little bit of SRAM wrap, let it sit for another 45 minutes, and while you're doing that, you want to turn your oven on super high, 475, 500. And you also want to put a little pan of water on the bottom rack, okay? And let that go for the 45 minutes while this is proofing. Okay, so this is proofing, your oven is on, you can go and kind of enjoy and prep everything else and do whatever you want to do. When this has doubled in size and kind of gotten to near that size, we are going to take a knife and we're going to cut right nice, this is not the proper knife, but a sharp chef's knife, and right down the middle, 
and get that to kind of split open like that. Okay? And then you can brush it with oil or you can spray it with water and then right in the oven, okay? That's going to bake for about 22 minutes. And then one other thing to keep in mind is that after the 22 minutes is done, turn your oven off and leave it in the oven. Another 10 minutes. And that residual heat from the pan of water you put in there, all right, and the existing heat that's there is going to allow you to give you a softened outside crust. So it's still crusty like a French bread, but not ripping your roof of your mouth off when you eat it, all right? And that's that kind of little thing to keep in mind when you're doing that recipe. So you just carry on, and uh, you got your six loaves, and then rock and roll, all right? So that's the bread. Any questions? Some confection ovens, the newer ones, they'll automatically adjust. So you just don't even have to consider it. If you've got an older confection oven, it's usually about 25 degrees hotter. So if you've got a confection and you put it at 475, it's kind of 500, right? Uh, but there are confection ovens out there now that automatically, you have one, right? Automatic kind of corrects itself. Just remember, 25 degrees more when you go confection. So you can go 450 confection for a 475 regular heat, okay? And be careful with confection on the browning, right? It may brown a little quicker, but brown is flavor, so that's a good thing, you know? All right, any other questions on the bread? Any other questions? So if there's no other questions on bread, I'm going to get going on the liver pate. So with the liver pate, it's super easy, okay? But it's also super, super uh, delicious, uh, delicate, you know, uh, full of flavor. And it goes excellent with bread, crackers, and it's just a lovely thing to have in your fridge. This will last a couple weeks in your fridge after you make it. Um, and, you know, you can kind of, I've kind of always got pate in my fridge. Uh, all right. So with pate, we've got liver, all right? With the liver, you want to try to keep your pieces fairly consistent because you want consistent cooking, okay? So when you're trimming it up and you're getting the, the, uh, the veins and everything off the end, you want to remove that so you're just left with the liver, okay? So clean your livers up, give them a rinse, and uh, you're good to go. Newfoundland always, always, always has livers in all the stores, and they're super cheap. You know, they're a couple bucks a pack, and one pack will make enough pate for you for, you know, you and your friends for sure. It gets a big yield, right? So what we want to do is just soften some butter. Make sure you control your heat. So we're going to soften a little bit of butter, and then we're actually going to put in our onions and our thyme. So a little bit of fresh thyme. And all we want to do is basically just soften it. We don't want to overcook it. We don't want to brown it. We want to control our heat. And we just want that onion to soften, okay? So the ingredients we're using here is heavy cream, butter, brandy. We've got a little bit of ginger here and salt liver, and onion, okay? That's pretty much, and thyme is optional, you know? Sometimes you can't always get the fresh thyme, so it's definitely optional, but it's, it's nice when you have it, okay? So not a hard, hard cook, but it's definitely starting to soften, and now I'm going to add my livers. And what you want to do is don't crowd them. Make sure all the livers are evenly spaced out. Don't crowd, okay? Um, so make sure you got a pan big enough to kind of spread them all out. Can you guys see that? There we go. So now we're going to let those livers kind of cook. Each one of them, you know, like I say, there's space in between each one. The onions are kind of marrying and protecting and, and kind of infusing flavor into that, uh, into that liver. Now, one thing about pate is you do not want to overcook it. All right? You do not want to cook these livers all the way through. All right? If you do that, your texture is going to be way off, okay? 
So sometimes in Newfoundland, we like to really cook things. You know what I mean? Really make sure there's no blood. and there's Just try to get yourself out of that thinking because they're, they're going to be cooked. The residual heat in the process all the way along will finish cooking them. Okay? So you want them to go in there kind of medium. And you also want to make sure you try to get some browning on those livers. Okay? There's a lot of technique for doing liver. Some people will, you know, uh, put it in milk first, steep it, you know, and heat it that way, and then put it in. Some people will boil. So I like frying because you get that brown caramelization, and that just brings flavor right into it. So I'm getting a nice sizzle. I'm starting to see some blood kind of coming out from the surface. I'm seeing a nice color around the edges, so I know it's cooking. So I'm just going to kind of toss that. And again, you want to kind of go through and make sure all the pieces aren't on top of one another. They're all in contact with heat. And at this point here, if I cut one of those open, there's blood in there. They look raw, okay? Um, but what's going to happen is I'm going to take those and process them, and all that heat, once they're blitzed, is just going to finish that cook, all right? So don't worry too much about making sure they're fully cooked. Just do not overcook them, okay? So wherever you do see a little bit that's kind of completely raw, just turn it over and let it get its heat. So I'm at a point now where it needs to come off the heat. So at this point, I'm going to throw my brandy in. Now normally when you add alcohol, you let it reduce down and you let it totally disappear uh, and just be left with a concentrated flavor. In this case, no. We're going to burn the alcohol off so it's okay to eat for anyone who's not, uh, you know, into alcohol. So the alcohol will burn off, but we're not going to get rid of all the liquid. We don't want the liquid to totally reduce. So as soon as I put, the, put that in, I usually take it off the heat, okay? And what will happen is the residual heat in that pan will continue to kind of finish that cook, okay? So I got lots of liquid in there. I'm still seeing a little bit of blood on the inside, which I like. And then I'm just going to dump it right into my food processor. So straight in everything we'll add our seasoning that's a little bit of ginger a little bit of salt and we're gonna add our cream and then we're gonna blitz and it's gonna be liquidy it's gonna be soft and liquidy but what happens is we're gonna add this butter and then once it cools, it all firms up, okay? So now that we've got that kind of blitz, you can see the heat that's kind of bursting off it. That heat is going to finish cooking those livers, okay? Keep that in mind. So you do not need to finish in the pan because it will overcook then. Then we're just going to add in our butter. Finish blitzing. Let all that come through and come together. And then we're going to pass it through uh, a strainer, fine stiff strainer. These are real cheap, easy to get. Okay, so you can kind of get a sense here of just how kind of runny that is. That's perfect because you want to pass it. So it needs to be liquidy. in order to get it to kind of pass through and give you that nice, smooth, really beautiful, kind of creamy chicken kind of texture. Or, sorry, uh, flavor. Okay, so now all we're going to do is just kind of keep pushing that back and forth. And all the little bits of onion and thyme and stuff that we cook the flavor out of is then going to stay in this, in this sieve and we're going to be left with nothing but just that delicious flavor of chicken liver and, and ginger and thyme and, and uh, onion. And it's just really, really nice. And I use shallots here. Shallots are a much more delicate onion. Uh, Walmart lists them all the time. They're little tiny boxes for like a dollar or a dollar, maybe two dollars. Um, 
But shallots are really delicate and nice. So when you're doing something like a delicate pate, shallots are always a little better than onion. Onion can tend to be, you know, strong, right, uh, and overpower a bit, but you're cooking it out anyway. So you can see I'm left with just kind of a little bit of, like I say, some of those onions that we threw in there, and you're just going to discard that, okay? Um, and what you end up getting, all right, once it's set, is a really, really beautiful... A really, really beautiful kind of, I'm just going to run down, see how nice and smooth that is, all right? And that's what that will turn into, that will set up into that, okay? So you'll notice that if you've overcooked it, it'll be really grainy, all right? When you do that, it won't be smooth. You'll notice little, little tiny bits of grain. You know you've overcooked the liver, all right? So just kind of work on your timing of it. Um, but anyway, it's absolutely delicious, and we should have some samples coming out right now. So the samples that we're going to give you guys are going to be uh, slices of this bread, just nothing done, just sliced, uh, with a little bit of pate spread on top, and then we've got some pickled zucchini, um, and I think cauliflower, uh, and we just basically kind of put a little bit of that on top, okay? Um, so any questions? All good? All right, well, how about... Uh, we got Ben here coming around with samples, so anyone who's interested can feel free to uh, have a try. He'll probably bring it around to you as well. And uh, if anybody wants to come up and just try the pate, certainly welcome to do that. I do have a bit of bread here as well. Um, and any questions, we're here to answer. And uh, thanks, for, thanks, for, thanks for attending.